Good evening, Dave Breton with Lobo Business Sales, LLC. In this podcast, I want to go over a simple topic that can actually be very important to know before you speak to literally anybody about selling your business. And that is, are you ready to sell your business? It goes much, much more than just how much can I get for my business or can I sell it or blah, blah, blah. It's deeper than that. For most people, they sell a business once in their life. It literally is a life-changing event. Sometimes it's an equity injection or an equity event. Some people call it. It's a fancy word for a whole bunch of cash coming your way for all your hard work, blood, sweat, and tears, and stuff like that. And yes, sometimes that has a a bearing on why you want to sell. But we want to look deeper than that. We want to say, what is this event in the lineage of your lifelong path? Now, we don't need to go all the way back, but roughly in very summarized form. You're born, you go to school. You kind of decide what you want to do. You do some things. Some people go to jobs. Some people go straight to entrepreneurship. Somehow or another, you ended up in your own business. Now you've spent an amount of time building this business. Blood, sweat, tears, laughs, cries, anger. Probably could name a hundred million things here. But any true business owner knows what I'm talking about. Some days are great. Some days... You feel like you're going to lose your mind. But there comes a time where it's time to exit that business. And that is what I want to speak about. The why. Why are you looking to sell your business? It has to be more than just the money. You want to take a step back. And you want to do a self-assessment pretty much on your own. Now, however you're able to just get clear with your thoughts, sometimes that's walking on the beach or walking under the moonlight, taking a drive, a stroll, brushing your teeth, looking in the, you know, in the mirror, uh, relaxing on the couch, wa- watching the Buccaneers game. Well, wait a second. That's if they didn't play like they did this past weekend, but that's another story. And for those who don't know, I am a huge Buccaneers fan. You want to know why you're selling. You don't want to have just a one word answer like retirement or, you know, I'm just done or burnt out. You want to know the, the subtext of why that is. So let's look at retirement. Okay, I want to retire. Great. What do I want to do in retirement? How do I want to enjoy retirement? You need to break it down a little bit more. And the reason I mention this is because it's going to go into different factors of how you're selling that business and how you're exiting that business, which can have dramatic implications on the pricing of what you may be able to or not achieve on the exit of your business. As an example, let's say you're selling for retirement. Quick, easy, simple. But let's say the person that buys the business is their very first time. And just throwing a number out there, they buy for $3 million as an example. Nice business, been around forever, spent $3 million. You know, you know it like the back of your hands. You're handing off to somebody. Bank loves it. Everybody loves it. Deal's done. The one thing that we're not taking into account is the experience level of the person that's coming in. That person may be willing to offer a premium to value to keep you on as a consultant. Now, although you may be retiring, that goes into the retirement part of saying, okay, how am I retiring? Am I going to wake up and go to Vegas right away and take everything and put on the roulette wheel? Probably not. But you might go on vacation, take a little time off. But mostly, unless you have something already lined up or another phase already lined up, I find a lot of business owners actually get bored Because their normal is 80 to 100 hours a week. That's their normal where everybody else looks at Monday through Friday, 9 to 5 as anything over that is overtime. 
or time and a half. Um, when you are used to working that much, when you have a lot of time in your hands, you kind of go stir crazy. You need something to do. Sometimes that phone call from that person that bought that business, they might have a five second question. You know, you know, uh, I, I lost a number for this vendor as an example, or this customer. And instead of just saying, oh, this is a number, blah, blah, blah. That's the answer to the question. You go on to a 15, 20 minute story on how you develop the relationship of this customer over years and years. And you guys met at Burns to have your steaks when they came in. And if you're not from Tampa, Burns is one of the best places. Not a plug. I'm not, that's not a paid endorsement. It's just an awesome place to go. But I digress. The point I'm trying to make is you may be looking to actually fill some of those voids of time on retirement. Now, I know that's kind of long winded, but it's important to know because even a very experienced business owner is going to want to know that there is the ability of an owner or transitioning owner to assist in that transition, whether it's physically being there or being able for consulting basis on an ongoing concern. The big difference, and think about this if you were buying a business for the very first time and on one business, everything is completely the same on both sides. If we're looking at two comparable businesses and one said, hey, give me $3 million and you get this business, I'm leaving on day one. The other one's uh, $3 million, unless you think a little bit more, and I'm going to stay 30, 30 days every single day. And I'll stay for another six months part-time and another two years if you need me to call. You kind of get the point. Uh, one has a much more comfort level, even if it's never utilized. And that, um, if not even gaining a premium, can command a lot of the pricing and terms that you're looking for. So know the subtext of the highlighted amount, highlighted, excuse me, highlighted reasoning that you're looking to sell. If you're looking on going into other avenues, ask yourself, what avenues? Are you looking to go into another vertical? Are you looking at maybe a competitor model? Maybe you don't like the type of business you're in, but it has ancillaries that you might be able to maybe do a merger or uh, an add-on or, uh, you know, or, 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 or maybe do some type of a uh, new product or offering on a smaller company that you can just you know scale and roll them in on an acquisition and maybe run that division. There's so many different options than just completely saying, this is what I want to do and I want to get out. So when you're looking at another avenue as the reasoning for your sale, that may justify a price, but keep in mind, price is arbitrary. It is just a number. It's really the breakdown of the terms of the, those numbers that will impact what that final deal outcome is. So sometimes it's all cash, whether it's through a bank or finance or sell finance. That's just it's just where the money's coming from, but it's still a cash exit. But it might go into different a aspects where there might be other benefits that it becomes a win-win. And in the end, no matter what people say, the best deals are always the ones that are win-win when both parties feel that they won when they're leaving the closing table. Um, it's just, it just feels, feels better for everybody also. So that's, that's a second option. The third, you might be burnt out. This happens a lot when you're experiencing a business that has a downturn. Um, maybe a new competitor came in town that is taking market share, maybe a product uh, maybe you're a manufacturing company and your products become obsolete um, or there's a shift in the in the um, in government regulations uh, although a little bit above you know what I'm personally doing one of the items that you know I, I see a lot of the higher level equity people looking at is stuff that are transitioning away from fossil fuels to more um, uh, a, a solar and, um, and, and, and battery, um, wind, a lot of the alternative energy, um, items. So company, you know, companies, if there's a transition that's a little bit outside the scope, but more on a macroeconomic level, you want to kind of consider that and say, okay, if it, you know, it is, uh, is the world shifting below my feet or how is this, how is this working? How, you know, how can I, you know, implement my exit, uh, because I'm feeling burnt out. 
sometimes those exits don't need to be a full sale of the business. There's such a multitude uh, that can be discussed, much more than you know the the scope of this podcast. But just as, as an example, if you have a large, large you know, or I should say, larger scale for the micro uh, mid market, that 15 plus employees, maybe up to 300 employees, you might be looking at you know items that um, give ownership to the employees. Now, there are, you know, other parties and other licensing uh, individuals that you have to go to, but st- stuff such as ESOPs and, um, and uh, other uh, employment programs that can actually take ownership, phase you out a little bit, are some of the ideas you can look at. Um, another thing is if you still want some t- type of ownership in the business, maybe bring on a, a partner in, on, an, on an equity basis. There's a whole host of items that can be done that can be structured with the team that you're working with. Um, and keep in mind that everybody should work as a team to get you to the goal that you're, you're looking at. But the point that is, you know, th- that I'm trying to illustrate or highlight on this podcast is as you're speaking to all the professionals and basically getting an idea here, an idea here, an idea here, and putting them all in a in a big mixer bowl and mix them all up and see how you know this you know this, the sum of all parts for lack of better words you want to know what's in your heart what is it that you really really want the why why with the subtext underneath that really illustrates to yourself that you can look yourself in the mirror and say why am i selling my business that I work so hard for, that I woke up early, stayed up late, stressed, celebrated, went through all the ups and downs. Why am I selling? When you can sincerely answer that to yourself, only then should you sell your business. If not, you still need to search for that answer. If you'd like to talk to us about different options, that are available to you, feel free to give us a call. All my contact information is on um, wherever you're listening to this, YouTube, LinkedIn, social media, website, whatever. Um, If you can't find it there, you can give us a call, 813-395-9552. Visit us online, uh, www.lobobusinesssales.com. We offer initial consultations free of charge. Um, After that, we have different programs, but um, no pressure. No obligations initially, but just to actually speak to you know somebody and get an idea of what might be possible for you. Um, keep in mind too, we're a big proponent um, that we're not right for everybody. Um, you should speak to multiple professionals, not only brokers. You, sp- you should speak to your accountant. You should speak to your attorney. You should speak to your spouse, your partner, um, your your you know your business your your business associates. Um, anybody that has an impact not only on the business itself but on you as a general um, fellow human being um, and, and and going through those lineage paths that, that I was speaking of uh, of your life. In the end, um, some might have other beliefs, but I believe we go through this life one time. Make the best of it. Dream big. Make sure you get what you want um, and live without fear. Once again, if we can be of any help, feel free to reach out. I look forward to seeing all your dreams come true. And if we can help you in any way, once again, feel free to reach out. This is Dave Breton, Lobo Business Sales, LLC. Hope you enjoy your evening. Good night.